So in the last video, I introduced some basic instructions. I also introduced the notion of registers. Let me now expand on that a little bit more. So in any high-level programming language, let's say in C, when you define a variable, that refers to a location in memory. Okay, so you have your processor, and then you have your memory, which is sitting outside your processor. And this could be very, very large, right? So many systems today might have, say, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, or, or larger portions of memory. So when you define a variable, that essentially allocates some space in memory to store that variable's value, right? So you may define variables A, B, C, D. Those might all be sitting in memory over here. Now, when I want to operate on these values, I have to bring them into registers, right? So I'd mentioned before that when I do add, you know, A, comma, B, comma, C, these are all locations in the register file. Okay, so the register file is this location, is this piece of storage over here, which could be a collection of, say, 32 different values. And before I can execute an instruction like this, I have to make sure that A, B, and C are all sitting in the register file. Okay, so what I need to first do is bring these values from memory, put them into the register file, and then I can execute an instruction like add A, comma, B, comma, C. So your memory space is much larger in this example you have eight gigabytes of memory space. That means you can store, you know, billions of different variables. But the register file is on the processor. It's a much smaller structure that has to be accessed very quickly. So you are only provided a few registers, right? It's like a scratch pad where you can do some computations. When you're done with those computations, you can write the result back into a memory location. Okay, so the register file is relatively short. In x86, you have only eight registers. In the MIPS instruction set, you have 32 registers. Okay, I could provide more registers, but then that consumes more energy. And I could provide fewer registers, but if you provide few registers, then it means that you're constantly exchanging values back and forth from memory to the register file. Okay, we will assume in this class that each register is 32 bits wide. This is also known as a 32-bit architecture. That means you can only refer to values that are as wide as 32 bits. Modern architectures are larger. You can have 64-bit architectures. That means you can do math on 64-bit values. This also means that you can have addresses that are as large as 64 bits in size. And an address refers to some location in memory. So there's a register value over here that has an address of a memory location. Okay, and I need that address sitting in a register before I can access the memory location. If I'm only given 32 bits over here, it means I can only have 4 billion unique addresses. Okay, so how would I get 4 billion, right? So 32 bits means I can have 2 to the 32 different values, right? Because each bit can store a 0 or a 1, right? So I can correspondingly encode 2 to the 32 different values in a 32-bit entity. And 2 to the 32 is nothing but, you know, 2 to the 10 times 2 to the 10 times 2 to the 10 times 2 square, right? And 2 to the 10 is about, is 1024, which we refer to as 1K. This is another K. This is another K, right? So 3, so 1K times 1K times 1K gives you 1 gig, right? Or, you know, close to a billion. And finally, I have 4 over here. So this gives me, 4 gig values, right? So roughly 4 billion values. By having a 32-bit register, I'm able to provide 4 billion different unique addresses. If you assume that each address refers to a 4-byte entity, and I'm providing 4 billion unique, uh, unique locations, then it means I can have a total of 16 gigabytes of memory space. If you assume that each address refers to a one byte entity and I'm, I'm providing four billion different addresses, then it means that I'm providing a four gigabyte address space. Okay, so depending on whether an address refers to one byte or four bytes and so on, you can have different amounts of memory space being supported by a 32 bit architecture. So since today you can support memory capacities that are much higher than say 16 gigabytes, a 32 bit architecture cannot really access all of that memory. Right, to access all of that memory, you need to grow your architecture size. And the next best option is to use a 64-bit architecture. Uh, a 32-bit entity such as this is referred to as a word. 
these 32 registers are also given special names and this is only to make the code more readable for a human okay if i want i can use any register i want but just to make the code more elegant each register is given a specific name so if i use you know s0 through s7 those usually refer to registers that correspond to a c or a java or a high level programming language variable if i'm using a register t0 through t9 that refers to a value that's a temporary scratch pad number that does not really correspond to any variable in uh, in memory okay and you know as we go through some examples of code you'll see when i use s0 s1 and when i use t0 t1 so i just mentioned that you have this large memory space that stores all your variables and the register file is a collection of 32 values that i need to uh, that, that i need to operate on right away okay so before I can operate on some value, I have to bring it from memory into the register file. Once I do the math, once I produce a result, it gets stored in a register and then eventually gets put back into a variable in memory. So values are constantly being moved back and forth from memory to the registers and then from the registers to the memory. And that movement is done with instructions that are referred to as loads and stores. So a load has this format over here. When I want to load a word, that is when I want to load a 32-bit value into a register, I provide the address of the memory location, right? So maybe I'm interested in variable A that is sitting over here. To fetch that, that, uh, that value, I need to specify exactly where in memory that variable A is sitting, right? So the memory address gives me a pointer into, that, um, into my memory space. It says that variable A is sitting exactly over here. Go bring that value and then place it into register T0. Okay, if I'm doing a store word, then I'm going to take the value in T0 and put it into that given location, right? So once I've done some math and produced a result in a register here, it gets placed into the memory address that corresponds to variable A. One thing I've kind of not explained just yet is this memory address term over here. I've not quite explained how I'm going to express the address of a given variable. Okay, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. 